channel my name is mr aid and tonight i'm going to take you through my ray vigilance deck so this is a move on from luke blue that i shared oh, i think it was about a month ago i don't think i'll ever be playing luke again now since ray has been launched um she's just well i'll, I'll do is I'll, I'll show you the difference between the two and just why i prefer ray over luke and the slight adjustment the adjustments i've made to the deck so ray and luke are very similar units they're both uh force units and vigilance but ray is fringe where luke is rebel they've both got an exhaust action and spend a resource but luke has to spend it on a heroism unit that's played out that phase which can't always take place where raise, you can give an experience token to a unit with two power or less. So that's not cost, that's power. Okay, so there's quite a lot of units in this deck that can come out later in the game and take advantage of her power. Um, so yeah, they're um, both going to come out on five resources. And for Luke, Luke is slightly tougher as a unit. So he's a 4-7 and he just gives a shield on attack, which is good. Ray is a 2-6 which seems a fair bit weaker. However, she has got the only attack, give an experience token to a unit with two or less power. So she can put it on herself, instantly making herself a 3-7. Uh, or you could put it on other units. More often than not, it's going to go on her. And obviously Luke gets the shield, but she gets this really powerful Restore 3, which for those of you that have watched this channel, you're aware I love playing Vigilance decks. I love playing the sort of command, control -y, well, the sort of more control decks, sort of outlasting your opponents. And Restore 3, there's no other unit in the game that's got anything that's higher than this. I think there's, what, two units that come with Restore 3. It might only be one, might be the Luke unit, I think, is the only thing. And it's, it's net, just, you know, five, two damage, three heal. Could it be as much as three damage? And three and three heal. So really, really like Ray. Okay, so let's get over to the deck itself. So here's the, the oddly for me, I've got quite a lot of turn one plays in this deck. So I go with a 30 base because you've got two ways of win winning with vigilance. It's take the base down or take out all their cards and outlast them. So it just gives you that nice option. So as always, I'll start with the space units. Then once I've gone to the deck tech, I'll go to force table, play a couple of games against the starter sets, just so I can show off what I'm trying to achieve with this. So you get an idea of how the deck itself plays. I prefer force table over Carabast. Carabast, I get to play against a human. Um, so it does give you a better experience. However, I think visually, because uh, force table, you can see what's going on. You can see the cards moving, the exhausts, and Carabast does have a fair amount of difficulty with things like shields it doesn't give a true reflection of play so for this again beyond force table so as ever let's start in space so we've got uh four different space units and you'll see a recurring theme on a lot of the cards in this deck a sort of a mix between sentinels and restore so the idea is to control damage away from the base onto my units and to out heal and out damage their base so turn one, we've got the restore dark. So a two, three will restore one. Staple of most people's space game for a vigilance. So the new card here, which is the Grace Gray Squadron Y Wing. So run with three of these. It's a two, one, three. And on attack, the opponent chooses you put two damage to a unit or two damage to its base. Both of these can be upgraded. This can be upgraded twice with Ray. This one once. So you're then suddenly taking this into a three, five or this one into a 3-4 with Restore and then the two extra attack. Then um, we on turn two, we've got Twin Pod Clark, uh, Car, which is a 2-2. Two -two. Again, Ray can put her experience on this, taking it to a 3-3 three -three with Restore 2. And then the final one, more Restore, with the Razor's Crest. So three of these, Restore 2. But when played, I can return an upgrade from my hand. So it's, it's it comes out on four resources, and it's 3-4. So there's nothing massive in space here. But the idea is to try and get a fair amount of space units down if I need to. Go wider, keep healing, and sort of outlast them. Down onto the ground units. Three cost, three units of R2-D2. 
this is a really good first turn play. So 1-4 is quite tough, and people tend to ignore R2 because it's going to take two rounds of not attacking the base to get rid of R2. But because of Ray's ability, you can put her ability onto him twice, basically take him into a 3-6, which is going to allow you to just look at the top card, bury it at the bottom, and do, do that quite a lot. And then eventually he does become quite tough, and people are going to have to deal with him. Most of the rest of the deck is on the ground are force units. So to take advantage of lightsabers and the forces with me. Um, so yeah, we, we've got the, the cheapest of the force units, which is the uh, Guardian of the Wheels. It's a two cost, uh, two, two, nothing amazing. Ray can upgrade this one, incidentally, but your first upgrade on this is one less. So you just put a lightsaber on it for one less cost or protector or anything like that. Yoda. Three, three units of Yoda, uh, restore three, so more restore, two, he's a three cost, two, four. As soon as he comes out, he can be upgraded because he's got that two power. So taking him to a three, five, restore two. So it's a net sort of five attack. And also when he's defeated, you can draw yourself a card and give your opponent one if you want to. One of my favorite four cost units in the game, which is Kane and Jarrus. So again, he's got the force keyword. And on attack, you can discard one card from your opponent. So it's starting to mill them off. And then for each color aspect he's got on there, you're going to heal your base. So you're normally going to heal your base, well, at least one, maybe two. We've then got Ray, quite an unpopular um, Ray unit uh, legendary card. I quite like her. I like her in this deck especially because she's cost five. She hits for four. She's got seven health. And when you attack you may heal two damage and then give a shield token to a it's only going to be my total blue units that so i've got bendu uh cargo juggernaut and um the guardians of the wills so but a little bit of healing is quite good the four the seven damage just make us sit around for a little while three costs uh three costs three um obi-wan kenobis he's kind of almost key to this set so he's a 4-6, but he's Sentinel. But what I'm looking to do with him, it's that when defeated, give two experience tokens to another friendly unit. If it's a force unit, get, get another card. So I'm just looking to bring him out, get him to die, and then just hopefully maybe die two or three times. Bendu. Uh, one of our subscribers got me back onto Bendu. I was I didn't really like Bendu, but in this deck, it's only going to cost six because of the double blue... Uh, um, Remote Village, 4-7, so he can survive at even a hand ambush. But he's got Sentinel, but he's got the on attack to make a, a non-heroism uh, or villainy card cost two less. Technically, when this goes well, you can play Vigilance, which is incredibly strong for two. Uh, sorry, trying to song at four for only a cost of two. So it's it's a fantastic combo to be able to get that off. Cargo Juggernaut, heal my base for four if I've got any other blue units out. Nearly always going to happen. Four, six with shield. And then my end game is Luke. So I run with three copies of Luke himself. So he's seven cost. He's six, seven. Highest stats in the game for seven cost, I think. Especially given that restore three. But when I'm play, when you play him, you can do, give a unit minus three, minus three. If something's been fortunate enough to die this round, you can go minus six, minus six. Pretty much killing nearly everything there. The upgrades, so protector. So one cost plus one plus one. Not amazing, but it can go on space units, can go on ground units. This is my control part as well. So if I want them to have to attack a unit, I can buff a unit slightly but it means they can't hit into the base. We've then got a new card, Mystic Reflection. This replaces Make an Opening. Make an Opening was a three cost, minus two, minus two, and do, and heal a unit for two. But this is a one for a minus two, minus two, which is an incredibly good, either cheap removal or sort of wound a unit out so it's easier to get them out of the game, or it just means they can't do as much damage into you. Luke's lightsaber. I'd like more than one of these. I, 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 I've been trying to run this with two, but there isn't anything I want to get rid of. So I run with one just in case I do manage to get Luke out and I can put it onto Luke. You know, the, the three one is pretty good. 
I can go on any of the force units as well. So if I do need to, but it is better if I can actually get it onto Luke. And then three copies of Jedi lightsaber, incredible upgrade, uh, three cost three, three. And on attack, the defender gets minus two, minus two, which a lot of the times will just instantly kill a unit. And then the real strong card of here is the forces with me, which is why I'm playing predominantly force units on the ground. Choose a friendly unit and give it two experience tokens. That's a nice instant buff. If it's a force unit, give it a shield. And then I can attack with it straight away. So I'm increasing the damage by two. And also it's not going to take any damage if it attacks into a unit. Or obviously if it goes into the base, it's going to keep that shield. And then to me, the strongest card in the game still at a cost of four. Vigilance, discard six cards. I still like doing that. Uh, here we base five, which is strong. Defeat uh, a unit with three health or less. I'll give a shield to a unit. So, and also, because I said, because I can play that at two off Bendu, <laughs> I've got to keep three copies of this in the deck. And then the new one, another new one is Rivals Fall, which is an incredibly strong card. It costs six, just defeat a unit. So this I'm just holding on to, even if I pull it on turn one, I'm holding on to it until that leader unit comes out, just so I can instantly kill it on turn five. So that's the main units. The sideboard restock. So if you come against another vigilance deck, you're going to have to restock because they're going to try and out mill you and out survive you. So you're going to need to carry on going with that. Top target, which is a healing bounty that you can put on there. Entrench. One of my favourite cards from set one. It's sort of gone back a little bit now on, on sets since sets two's come out. But you're going to give one of your units plus three, plus three. You can't attack a base, but it's great on Sentinels or great playing it on their units to stop them attacking you. Um, this uh, Midnight Repairs allows you to... So it's two cost. So it's a double Vigilance, but it's still going to cost you two. You can heal eight uh, damage across multiple units. Uh, second Chance... This is the only deck I think this works in. So second chance, it costs you four. You can play it onto a unit. When that unit dies on an, you know, another action this turn, you can bring it back for free. So basically all I'm looking at doing is if I need to do it because I'm coming against big units, is I'm going to play it onto Luke. So when Luke dies, a unit's gone out that round. So Luke's going to come back in. He's going to have done the damage, hopefully, on when he died. And then he's going to give the minus six, minus six to something. And then again, we've got the Foul the Dragon, which for four cost, you can just defeat a unit with a power of six or more. So that's the base. That's the uh, deck. So let's go over to Force Table as ever. Let's start off with the Mandalorian and we'll see how we get on. So I can lose a loop because I've got three. Lots and lots of turn one plays. Turn two with the lightsaber in space. So we're not going to take a mulligan. I'm going to lose Bendu and Luke. So we've got one more Bendu. Losing a Luke's quite sad, but let's go with the Guardians of the Wheels. Take the initiative. So you think I would do lightsaber now, but I'm not. What I'm going to do is I want to take advantage of Ray's ability first. To put the guidance of the wheels to a three three. That way he's even stronger when I get the lightsaber out. Because I've still got a two turn here, but I can still play the lightsaber because it costs one less. So we take the initiative. Uh, lose the restore for now. This is going to be quite tough to take down for this deck, but we have got Mystic here. So let's get rid of Grogu, just because he's going to be a little bit annoying with his exhausting. So, play R2, just so we can see what bed. Okay, Razors, that's nice. We'll keep that at the top. You can dig for some more units, that's fine. And we will play a two cost unit out. The experience up there. Then we'll use raised ability. We will 
put this up here so we can actually survive its attack now. And then I'm going to put the protector on here. Can't afford it. We've got nothing left. Oh, yeah, it's because I could play the protector there. So we will pass. Lose the Y wing because we've got Razor's Crest to come out. So let's start on this. The wrong way around. I should always do that. What I should have done is upgrade Ray, but then go and hit it first to, to have taken it out. So I was expecting it to have the initiative on and I wasn't paying attention. So we will. Let's hold this for now. Let's just get the racist crest out. And then we'll put protector up here. Okay, let's just go and get rid of most of that. And then tack into here. And then we will pass. Okay, we've got Luke. You have to lose. Oh, do, do, do. So if I keep Mystic Reflection, I can get this out straight off if it doesn't attack. Okay. Let's just get rid of this first. raise onto R2 because so I can do it again when she comes out as a unit if I want to use her so let's attack this into base and see where it's going to put the extra two okay did it onto the unit which is good bring Ray out I uh, didn't want that rifle Uh, seven three. So that's going to kill everything now, isn't it? Put Yoda. Don't want to put Yoda on the bottom. We'll take the initiative. And we're going to need one of these to die. Let's get Ray. Just attack in. Three, three. It's not going to kill that. So I think six minus three minus three. Okay. Let's just get that out. Sacrifice R2. And I can bring Luke out and give this minus six. So we'll play Luke out now. Get my Y wing back. And as much as it looks scary, we've got so much restore here. They've only got one unit out and they've already passed. So we are now. I've got Vigilance to heal the deck with. This will just kill everything as it goes. So let's just take that out. Tack into here. Put the experience onto Ray. Let's do the extra one damage. Tack with Luke. I've suddenly gone from a horrible predicament. I haven't even spent any resources yet this round.
So just play the Vigilance, build the base of five, get rid of a unit for three. Uh, pass. Doesn't matter what they do, I don't think. Just attack into base with Luke. We're almost going to end up on no health whatsoever. Well, no damage. So. Oops, just got to put the experience before it let me end the game. So that's pretty much exactly how it should go. You're not always going to be ahead. So you shouldn't be panicking if you you do get behind. Uh, we've got Moff Gideon, who's gonna he's gonna come out around earlier. Um, okay, good array there. We're not gonna take a mulligan on this one. Let's make it a bit larger. So lose Obi Wan and Kanan for now. So we've got three copies of each of those. So standard turn one. Got R2, play R2, forces with me. Got a forces with me. I'm going to keep it just for up. Okay, doesn't matter. I'll put it to the bottom. I've got one anyway. I need to kill that before it attacks me. So I don't think I'm going to get a chance to, but I'll put the experience here. Um, okay, we'll lose Luke. Because Bendu's got the nice Sentinel. Plus four, plus four. That is going to be annoying. Uh, so it's going to do six. Even if I experience it, I think he's going to attack into base more than likely. So I'm just going to play the arc out. So, can't stop him dying, but it doesn't matter. We're going to trade in there, and then I can put raise action over here. And get the restore going. Looks like I might be going in for a space game. Get that for three, heal the base for one, and we'll put the Razor Crest out. We just took the initiative. So this round we've got Gideon coming out, and still nothing really on the floor. I want to keep Bendo for the next Bendu for the next round. So I think I'm gonna lose Mystic Reflection be good. Let's lose the Guardian of the Will. Okay, so I can go base or okay, I'm gonna just take this out so I can keep my two restore units in space. Uh, I've got a force unit out, I wasn't paying attention, idiot. I will. Um can't do that so. Let's bring Yoda out. Typically did the thing the wrong way round. But he might kill Yoda if I'm lucky. Let's just put an extra damage into Yoda and a bit more experience. I think we get a card. So we've got two Bendus. We'll lose Bendu on the next round. So let's Attack that, it's not going to do, it's going to, going to do one damage. We've got Ray coming out the next round. So it should give us restore six a turn. Let's take the initiative. 
Let's see if we can play Bendu very first turn. Let's lose one of the Bendus. Which is just going to slow them down quite a lot. Um... Bring Ray out. See, that seven health on Bendu is so tough. Never well, I'm going to attack. You can get rid of another unit. Okay. I think. Let's ignore it for now. Actually, I'm going to take it out with this. That's a horrible flame thing. Let's get rid of it with this one. And we'll pass. Lots of arcs and a Yoda. Okay. Get her out, then attack. Oh, it's got that horrible sentinel, which won't quite kill me. But let's put the experience onto Yoda. Get the arc out, attack then with Razor. The only thing is, we're not getting any benefit of the restore now, but we're going quite a bit wider, quite a lot. So we don't need to really worry about any of it now, I don't think. So let's lose the pod. I'm not going to need that. It's Ray gone. And let's boost up Yoda. I'm going to just attack the base with Yoda. Because I'm going to use the other four to play Vigilance, to get rid of this horribly obnoxious card. So I want to get rid of a unit with three, and I'm just going to get rid of six of their cards. Just take out some options. And then we'll attack and gain no restore, but it's another five damage onto the base. Not worried about protector from here. Just jump into base for another is that five damage, I think. Another five from space. Don't think they can do anything about any of this now. One of the amps in is Obi Wan and then off the experiences yet. Uh, I don't know. Put that on. Oh, I can. Okay. Play it on there. Leaves the race's crest. Tap Yoda, and we are done. Yeah, with no damage whatsoever, just because of the amount of restore that comes out. Okay, so... Do what I did the other day. I'll run it against... Bob a yellow. All right. Let's see how it goes. I've I haven't got a mulligan that. It's not too bad actually. So we won't mulligan that. We 
get rid of Ben do. Uh, right. Lose. Maybe one. Let Yoda out. Okay, didn't go into Yoda, which is good. Let's attack the base. You know, it might just take the shield off. I don't know. That's the way we're going to do it. Play Yoda again. Action ability. Put the experience on Yoda and then just pass. Lose Yoda. Way later, lose Yoda, no doubt. Okay, we'll put Kanan out then. We use her ability for the experience out here. Attacking the base. Got Ray coming out next round. We are letting him go a lot wider. Got to go with Obi Wan first. Attack with this. See what it does. So it puts the extra damage onto the base. That's good. Bring Ray out. So there, Bob are gone, and then we're going to lose. Oh, that hasn't got Gamora, you know, so we'll cancel that. I think we'll just take the initiative. Probably going to lose Ray. Lose the arc. So. Attack base. It's quite nice, it gets to heal up. Use his ability. See, her ability really starts to add up to these sort of just your little sort of more basic units at least on the vigilance can't see me playing it at all i want to bring out canaan because i need to get a force unit out just in case obi-wan dies let's just attack now again that two damage just it really weakens so many things. And there we go. Get the experience onto a force unit. So we'll put a lightsaber on him. Take the initiative. Let's get rid of that sentinel. Let's get rid of six of their cards. Who's the sentinel? We then get to attack into base. 
and heal one, discard one of their cards. And then, oh, saved himself right at the end. Okay, what we'll do is we'll just go a lot wider, put more units down, because we only need to do two damage. And we have one. Play Yoda out. Take the initiative. There's no Sentinels. So just get rid of Ark. It makes no odds. Attack. Into base. And that is it. Again, less than 10 damage onto my base by the end of it. So as you can see, it's, well, I really like it. it it's a style of play I enjoy, removing units, uh, sort of dominating, controlling the board. You can control space, you can control ground, you can go wide because all the units are quite cheap, combining that with Ray's ability just to add experience to each of the units. Say several of the units, you can do one or two upgrades so that they're suddenly becoming... Not only are they hitting harder, like looking at the Y-Wing, it's gone from a 1-3 to a 3-5 a with that two extra damage. So it's doing five damage every round. You know, in that last game against Barbara, it did, I would say, majority of the damage on the base until Kanan got out. And then once you've got your force units, you can throw the lightsaber on. As long as they haven't got Sentinels, you can swing in there. But even if they have got Sentinels, that lightsaber giving minus two, minus two, it's just really good, especially combined with the Y-Wing, because they're putting damage onto units across from different places as well. So, you know, there aren't many units that can attack from space to do damage on the ground i think there's probably two you know um the strafing gunship and there's a new one in in set two that i can't think what it's called but yeah so that's it that's how ray works if you agree with me or even if you don't agree with me that you think it's probably the end of luke you know i think definitely from set two i don't think we're going to see any competitive loot decks at all and i think everyone will move over to ray um, but yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please do share it with your friends. And as ever, please do subscribe to our channel because it really helps the channel grow. Thank you for watching.